Roses are red, violets are blue. I look at the bottom of the table and there I see you, Justin Marshall. Boo-hoo, I bet you the rest of the country is feeling for the Crusaders right now, are they? Listen, and, and you've got to take this as, 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 a, as something triumphal because it is only because the Crusaders have dicked everyone so often, so many times over so many years that people are loving it. Yeah, if you're not a Crusaders fan, of course we're loving it. Yeah, and obviously they're um, you know, really now in a fight to even make the finals in the playoffs. So, you know, I guess everybody else is thinking, well, won't it be a relief if they don't actually even manage to make it into the finals? Because you do fear that if they do, you just never know. Mm -hmm. You just never know That's what the team could produce. And they could, whoever, I bet you whoever finishes first and second will be sweating on the Crusaders, finishing seventh or eighth and scraping in and thinking, oh, no we've got to play the Crusaders. <laughs> You're exactly right. Look, and, 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 and this is what a champion side is expected to do as well, is to claw their way back and make that eight. Uh, look, a couple of tough games coming, Blues versus Chiefs. But I tell you what, Justin, I saw enough in the second half against the Chiefs, especially with the platform, the scrum, right? And we talked about that. I saw enough in that game against the Hurricanes, keeping them quiet as they did. And right at the very end, uh, there was a, a potential turnover, which I can't remember which of the Crusaders' front guys knocked it on. You you know, secure the ball there, and you'd actually won the game. So that's how goddamn close it was. That was very close. And obviously, when, when you're in a hole, um, you know, you tend to see the Crusaders over the over the last decade, uh, when, when they're in a hole, um, they can fight their way out of it, and they find a way to win. Um, at the moment, they're in that deep a hole that they've dug for themselves that... They, they aren't finding a way to win. They aren't finding the answers that are usually there. And that's probably the thing that they're really struggling with. There's, a, there's two games that really scream out uh, to you, and that's the Chiefs game and, and, like you said, the Hurricanes game at the weekend, where the, the game is there for them to win. And with all that experience and knowledge and know-how, that, uh, that, that winning finals grit that they usually have, their, their key guys usually just stand up at the moment with that youth and inexperience. Um, and some of the key guys just slightly off. At the moment, they aren't. They aren't winning those games. Justin, are Crusaders management going to stand by Rob Penny? Because it's very easy on you know the media side of the microphone. Oh, oh and four, and all the outcome, all the lines. Penny, for your thoughts, all this kind of stuff. You know, is Rob Penny in trouble? All of that kind of stuff. What are your thoughts on? Well, the Crusaders are too thorough. They, they, they went through you know a very thorough process and getting to the point where they selected Rob Penny to be the, the carry-on coach from Scott Robertson and, and give him the role. So they, they, they wouldn't have done that without um, asking questions like, you know, if we find ourselves dropping uh, a couple of games, do you have the answer? Do you have the ability to bring the team back? So, look, obviously they didn't expect that to be four on the bounce, um, but they equally didn't expect to have 10 players out. And, and, and the cattle that he's dealing with is significantly dearly, uh, different than what Scott Robertson had to deal with. So... Look, in a long-winded way, yeah, I do believe that they will back Rob Penny. Um, I don't believe everything that's happening out there on the field is entirely his fault. Um, you can see some of the structure and the game plan, um, but you know some of the, the errors are just individuals that are lacking a, a bit of confidence at the moment, probably feeling the pressure, um, and, and, and they are making mistakes out there that no form of coaching would be able to fix. So, yeah, look, I, I, I believe that they will stand by him, and I do believe that he's capable as a coach of getting them out of this current rut that they're in and getting them into those um, final series later in the year. Riley Hohepa, uh, young man, I think he's the third or fourth string, and he, he kicked a really crucial goal to put the Crusaders in front. And you on the commentary says, good, it's something about, you know, good one, young man. And I thought at the time, I thought, that's the confident <laughs> boost. That, but he needs that, doesn't he? A young guy like that, you could see the nervousness all over his face, mate. You, could, you know what he's thinking, what he's holding in his hands is the Crusaders here, right? Yeah, yeah, and I thought I, I, I did mean it in that context as well, not as a you, you young guy. You know, it's more you, you're basically in a high pressure situation that you've never been in before. You know, and it's not easy to take that responsibility. But he held himself together, stayed composed, and, and look, I, I thought overall, in general, he didn't really do a great deal wrong on the night. Um, he, he's just walked into a really difficult situation, but. I think the sooner they fix that problem, Marty, the better. Now, yep. obviously, they're, they're, they're not going to get my, um, uh, they're not going to get back. Um, who's the first five that's injured at the moment? Uh, that was Fergus taken over from was it Walker. Fergus? There you go. Yeah, you're not going to get him back. So, I think they need to just <laughs> Ravi's Rahana, I believe. I don't know how long he's out, but whoever it is, they've got to put somebody in that jersey and stick with them. Yeah. At the moment, there's too much chopping and changing, and I don't think it's helping. 
the rhythm and it's not helping the game plan. Let's just quickly talk about the Hurricanes before we move on, though. You can't deny four out of four, and this is the beauty, beauty about you know competitions, isn't it? You look at the points table; they've you know that's they've done what they've had to do, and they've done it in, in in an unconvincing way against the Crusaders as well, which I think is a really good thing for them because you can't win every match in this competition, razzle dazzle. No, you can't, and you can see real maturity in the way they're going about their method. Like I sat down after the weekend's games. And kind of thought to thought to myself, well, who who's the team that's been the most impressive so far? I think the Blues have stumbled their way um, into, into the into the first four rounds, um, but you know they've still been winning uh, the majority of their games, but not impressively. So yeah, it, it reeks absolutely. The Chiefs have looked good, but they've had a hiccup. But the Hurricanes are on a on a real roll, and they've played some tough teams, you know. So they haven't had it easy, but they've they've handled it really maturely. Um, they look. Clark Laidlaw looks like he's got a really good mindset in terms of getting the players in the right headspace. You know, games like that in the past, you would never see a Hurricanes team, you know, fight fight their way out of it and, and win in the dying moments. You know, usually that's what happens to them. Yeah, you're right. So men- mentally, he's obviously got them in a really good place. They look fit, Marty. You now, he's obviously Seven's background, and they've still got plenty of uh, fuel in the tank come 60, 70, 80 minutes of the game. So... He's certainly done a lot of work with them in the off-season. But for me, they're the most impressive side. And, uh, you know, they, 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 it's going to take a very good side to knock them off their pedestal at the moment because they're really well balanced. And they're doing it all with, without Geordie Barrett as well, which is a big, big uh, hole in, the, in their repertoire to be missing. And Justin be Marshall soon, with us so every, every Monday. 81 Test Veteran of the All Blacks. You hear him all, right across the weekend on Sky Sport, of course. And we're talking super rugby here. Winners on the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. In case you missed it all, the Hurricanes be the Crusaders. Reds smacked the Rebels. MP we'll talk about in a second with their second win, which is double what they had last year. Brumbies toughing it out over the Highlanders. The Chiefs, as Justin said, won it easy. And Waratahs and Blues, well, that was one for the purists and probably only. But let's talk about the Reds and the Brumbies. Reds are three and one, same as the Brumbies. Reds look like the best Aussie team in the competition, but I was really impressed. I watched the last half an hour of that Brumbies side, and they had to overcome a really determined, spirited Highlanders outfit, and they did it the tough way as well. They did it on the ground, man. They didn't spread the ball. They did it through their forwards, and I was highly impressed. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You got it bang on. Uh, They... Again, are, are a side that um, is scattered, you know, with Wallabies. So you would think that they should perform well, but their form, you know, in the last couple of years has been good, and then it's been bad. It's been quite inconsistent, and I, I think that kind of has been the way that they've started off this competition as well. And Stephen Larkin was chatting to him off camera um, at the weekend, the, the Brumbies coach, and he kind he kind of has recognised that. He said. What, what we do is we, we, we play, um, you know, the game really well in certain areas, but we button off in others. So, so our line-out gets dysfunctional. Um, and then we have to work on that for a week and, and fix it. He said, I've really demanded this week and, and us just being more simplistic, u- using the firepower that we've got and playing smarter and make sure that every cog within our within what we're trying to play in, in our game plan is functioning well and, and I certainly felt that they did that the weekend their line out and scrum was good they won some important scrum penalties late in the last quarter uh, and when they needed to they rolled up their sleeves on defence because of the Highlanders flew plenty, uh, through plenty of them and equally when they got inside the Highlanders 22 they were also, uh, uh, they were really clinical and came away with points the majority of the time so yep. we, we, we chatted about this didn't we Marty at the start of the year and we, we thought that the Brumbies would be their best Australian side, but you're bang on with the Reds. They look, again, really well coached, um, and uh, they, they look like they've got their head around the type of style they want to play, and they've been impressive.